It never ceases to amaze me how often the conservative base loves to shove its foot in its mouth. I feel like they're the only people like I ever rag on anymore, but that's because it's pretty self-explanatory why the liberals are completely out of reality and off their rockers, you know, for people like you and myself. You can't exactly expect to fight against these forces with allies who are only a few steps behind them in their march towards degeneracy and evil. Last time I talked about this conservative problem, I tried bringing to light their absurd idea to be more of, the, of being more lenient towards abortion because it's smart political strategy and you know winning elections is the ultimate end to everything we're doing the past week has provided us uh, some more you know embarrassing material from conservatives that i cannot wait to untangle so in the in the iowa capitol building uh, some folks took it upon themselves to erect a statue and candles of satan because probably because they were upset that a nativity scene was also placed in the building. But there was also constant debate around the media and social media about what was supposed to be done about the setup. So naturally, of course, liberals for the most part were saying it's fine. There's nothing wrong with it. And actually it's, it's kind of good. So I, I won't even address them because of course they're nuts and it's, it's, it's a waste of time to even argue with them at the moment, you know? So as for conservatives though, the main debate is whether we have a right in this country to favor certain religions over others. They do for the most part concede that Satanism is evil So at least they have that going for them. But some of them were sparked with outrage when an absolute Chad hero by the name of Michael Cassidy saw it when he was there and acted right away, knocking it over and essentially beheading it. The outraged mob chanted religious liberty. No matter what it is, Every religion has a right in this country. One of their main arguments, too, on top of that was, well, if we start going around tearing down satanic statues and statues of other false gods, then Christian statues and crosses are up for grabs, too. Here's a novel theory. Maybe we should stop pretending that God and Satan have the same rights here. There is a good... And there is an evil, a society that decides that it's good to treat good and evil equally is officially lost and needs to be either fixed or discarded and replaced. This murky swamp of gray where the fundamental is everything and the subject matter doesn't matter is a huge issue with the libertarians and some conservatives. What I mean by that is, for example, this particular issue with the satanic statue, they believe in the principle of religious liberty, where everyone and every religion all have equal rights. One cannot be favored or persecuted over the other, as if objectively there is no right or wrong religion. Any Christian who claims this, you know, claims this admits by default that they don't believe Christianity or Catholicism, to be more specific, is, is the one true religion. But why? Well, because Jesus Christ himself said that we can only find eternal happiness through him. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. 
other religions that don't recognize him for who he is are not the truth. The truth has rights. Lies and deceptions do not. It's easier it's easier pounding home uh, this this point in my head because you know then it is speaking out loud about it but you know I hope I somewhat made my thoughts clear. The satanic statue doesn't belong anywhere because it is evil and wrong. The nativity scene or any other Christian icon, statue, etc. belongs everywhere because it is truth and beauty. Religious liberty is a farce because it contradicts that. Okay, so I'll try to get through this other topic relatively quickly. Basically, um, at the Turning Point USA conference a few days ago, of the star guests, there was a gay black guy. He says he's a conservative and holds conservative values, and so that's why he's there. Most people didn't even seem to blink an eye at the hypocrisy, but some young people there did. And although their methods weren't the most charitable, it was at least refreshing to see that not everyone attending these mainstream conservative events are blind to this duplicity. Why is there a sodomite speaking at a conference for young conservatives? I thought they were all about upholding traditional family values. Anyway, these young people took it upon themselves to basically harass him until he ran away. As per the course, he immediately took to social media and claimed he called and claimed <clears throat> they called him many different slurs. Then booked a spot on CNN to cry about his harrowing experience. Charlie Kirk, of course, the head of Turning Point, immediately came to his defense to call out these bigots. The conservative movement is now just a safe haven for gays, pro-abortionists, Satanists, trans activists. The door just keeps opening wider and wider for them. I mean, what's the point anymore? We're, sup we're supposed to be charitable, of course, but apparently we have two different ideas of what charity is. Their version of charity is if their friend or neighbor was planning to jump out of a plane without a parachute because they think it'll be fun and exhilarating and everyone told them it would be, that they would that they uh, should just say, yeah, yeah, that sounds really fun. Whatever makes you happy. Whereas, whereas true tra charity would be to tell them, no, it'll kill them and you'll do whatever you can to stop them from making that horrible mistake. Same applies here. If you engage in a lifestyle that is taking you to the opposite direction of where God and heaven are, the charitable thing I need to do is to tell you that, is, you know, to tell you that and not affirm what you perceive as making you happy right now. As a quick point on something kind of off topic that I also wanted to mention at some point. So you know how I feel about the term Judeo-Christian. You know, that makes as much sense as someone saying they're pagan Christian or atheo Christian. I've been wondering what the reasoning was behind com combining those two. I'm sure it differs to people, but I was listening to a podcast and one of the people on it said, that's because we both follow the 10 commandments. So I figured, well, let's do a quick rapid fire through some and see if that's really true. So the first commandment, I'm the Lord thy God, thou shalt not have strange gods before me. Do Christians and Jews worship the same God? Well, they reject Jesus Christ, who is God, and they reject the Holy Trinity. So I don't think we fundamentally worship the same God at all, 
Therefore, we don't follow the same first commandment. And then the second commandment, thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. I assume that Christians and Jews both agree that using the name God in vain, you know, in a vain manner is wrong. But we disagree 100% on the use of the name Jesus Christ, as it is so blasphemously used nowadays. It is blasphemy to us, you know, to make you know, an exclamation about it, you know, or in a weird, you know, in a situation that's not appropriate. So it's blasphemy to us, but it doesn't mean anything for them. So we don't agree on the second commandment either, because there are definite, uh, very, very fundamental differences there. And let's look at the third commandment. Thou shalt keep holy the Lord's day. The Lord's day is on Sunday. In Judaism, the Sabbath is on Saturday. So no, they don't keep holy the Lord's day either. That's another very fundamental difference that you can't work around. So, I mean, after three, it becomes pretty clear that the Ten Commandments do not unite our religions, nor does anything else. And again, it goes back to the, the charity argument. If you really cared at all about the spiritual battle, you would be trying to convert them, not indulge in the false religions they follow and pretend that you know, we're all going to heaven together. You know, I, <clears throat> I have to keep saying it because it's the internet. I don't hate anyone. Anyone that, no one that I've been talking about today either. On the contrary, you know, Christ says, uh, to love your, you know, love your neighbors and pray for them. If we go into this battle believing that any non-Christians are our enemies and must be destroyed, and you know they're beyond hope, then the devil already won that battle because all he cares about is all of us losing our souls, which is what hate, you know, will do if we let it consume us. So. Don't hate anybody. We're all we're all in this together, but a lot of us just don't realize it. We're all it's a battle between God and the devil, between good and evil. God wants all of us on his side. So, you know, that's that's all I've got for today. I'll be taking a break over Christmas to visit family, which you know, which will be nice. So I hope you all have a wonderful and blessed Christmas, and God bless.